Hello and welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your one-stop destination for all things badminton. Coming up, Japanese para-badminton upstart Daiki Kajiwara talks about pursuing the sport professionally. We catch up with Denmark head coach Kenneth Jonasson to discuss how he's managing the team amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. We're trying to, to sanitize and uh, you know just make an even bigger effort to make mm. sure that nobody within the system uh, has the virus because it's going to affect us. And we look back at a tremendous encounter in the Thomas Cup in our classic match this week. When it comes to para badminton, two names stand out in the men's singles WH2 category, Kim Jung Jun and Daniel Chan Ho Yuen. While the world number one and two constantly battle in title showdowns, a young star from Japan is quietly hoping to break the established order. The 19-year-old was competing at the Hulik Daihatsu Japan Para Badminton International 2019 when we caught up with the world number six. Taking time off to speak with Badminton Unlimited, Kajiwara reveals more about his ambitions in the sport. Badminton が<笑> 自分の思い通りにできなくて、それが悔しくて、そこからちょっと頑張ろうと思ってやりました。本チームに選ばれるまでは、最初はチェアワークをしっかりとこう自分のものにするというか練習してからショットの精度練習だったりを毎日練習する
Kenneth Jonasson, the head coach of Denmark, has been busy keeping his players focused on hitting their peak form when the tour resumes with the Asia leg in January. With COVID-19, most teams have had to contend with not only being restricted to playing and practicing within their domestic setup, but also the changes within the national structure to ensure safe and secure training can take place. We, uh, every week we've been testing all uh, national uh, players, players come from the outside, so from the club level, joining the national centre, coaches, uh, staff. Weekly we're being tested for, uh, oh. for uh, just to make sure that nobody within the system um, kind of brings it. So we, we're trying to to sanitize and uh, you know just make an even bigger effort to make mm. sure that nobody within the system uh, has the virus because it's going to affect us. Even though it's not a play on the team, but he's affected. Bring it into the. Mm. Uh, into the training environment is very contagious and we want to make sure that uh, even now, especially now, we are more focused on uh, having the right protocol and uh, the safety measures in place. Uh, I think it's uh, necessary to keep playing badminton, of course, under the, the right restrictions and precautions in terms of the virus out there, but in some ways, uh, badminton also needs to move on uh, because I don't see the world uh, changing uh, or the, the virus getting under control anytime soon. So, 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 uh, so we need to, to move on. In the term. So, so I'm really proud that, of course, my own organization, but also bigger efforts, has found the right measures. Uh, here in Denmark, well, it's been weeks of uh, continuously practice. Uh, that's unprecedented uh, time for, for us coaches and national players to, uh, to practice. Um, we've had some summer holiday where we closed down the center uh, for, for 10 days, uh, telling our players uh, to take some time off. Uh, but then we started up um, mid-July again. I would say that when you go, when you work for 19 weeks, you, you go with a mindset of development. You develop the new, you work on new skills, uh, certain areas of the player are uh, weak points or strong points, trying to improve those, uh, being on and off court. But it's a totally different mindset, both from the players to the supporting staff and obviously the coaches as well, that now all the deal details has to come together uh, and uh, because we soon will need to perform. Uh, these coming weeks is what basically we work for. This is what we like. We like to work with players trying to get in peak condition. Mm -hmm. um, well, f first of all, we've, we've tried not to uh, to overdo it. Uh, we have no experience with that many continuous uh, practice in weeks, week after week after week. But we try not to overdo it, uh, make sure that uh, there'll be enough resting time for players. Uh, um, and then going in, if well, the goal was that every player uh, individually and if they're double in a pair, will have a few extra things they've been working on and that could settle into the game. Obviously, in any sport where you also push the limits, um, we've had to deal with small injuries, uh, some bigger than others, uh, and that obviously set your development back uh, quite a bit. But, but overall, I think, we just try to stay focused on the detailed work with, 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 on an individual basis. Um, and then certain special areas, I would say also for each category. But it's very, very difficult to see the, see the development when you practice against the same players day after day after day. Um, all these things I don't expect they will capitalize in the, in the, from the beginning. But hmm. over, over time, because it's not that easy. Uh, but hopefully, over time, 
when the players become even more comfortable with these things, they'll be able to uh, to settle in and uh, and uh, move the level up. Obviously, that's the main goal is uh, to push upwards, uh, to be, become a more rounded player, uh, which means that you are able to compete at a higher level. In some sense, it definitely is. Um, um, we definitely have to look in a slightly different manner on the team. We still have world-class players there, uh, also players with quite a lot of experience. Um, half of the team is, was in the team when uh, Denmark won back in 2016, uh, or more than half. But, but again, younger players is coming in. Uh, they've all heard the stories of how it went back then. They weren't a part of it. Uh, I think it's a slow and uh, and good change up, a natural change up that uh, some of the older players are not uh, with us anymore. Uh, still, still being active, but not part of the, uh, uh, the national badminton center uh, or the federation, uh, so to speak. Um, and I just think it's a natural step, uh, which we all which we all look forward to. Uh, it, it obviously would be great to have the same. A group of players for 10 years, but that's not realistic. Uh, so yeah, it's a natural step. It's a, it's a positive thing for me in terms of uh, uh, giving uh, younger players the chance to uh, to show themselves. It's time for a short break. When we return, we'll hear more from Jonasson and his challenges as a badminton coach. I heard a lot, and I can have sleepless nights when. Uh, when players uh, run into injuries, which is uh, something that we couldn't foresee. And the Thomas Cup takes centre stage in this week's classic match. Welcome back. As a coach in the Danish setup, Kenneth Jonasson saw the squad reach new heights, culminating in the men's team winning the Thomas Cup in 2016. Jonasson spoke to Badminton Unlimited about managing the team under the constant scrutiny of Danish media and, more importantly, former players who are part of the media entourage. Yeah, well, definitely, you know, uh, the, the expectations uh... For, from everybody uh, with the history that Denmark has, the history of top players commentating uh, on how we do our, probably how we do our job, uh, or more or less how we should, how we should do our job, or what we should change. Uh, I think that's just that's that's normal. Uh, but uh, for me, is that I believe. I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in what my team of coaches are doing. I believe in what this uh, this association is doing with uh, our national players. Uh, we are very much aware that, you know, looking over the the five categories, that in some categories uh, uh, we're struggling a little bit, but it's a development step. Uh, hmm. And uh, and we are we're facing it head on. For me, that's just part of part of life, part of when hmm. you sit as a, a chief head coach. Uh, then you have to deal with that bit uh, as well. For me, it's protecting the players and them not having to uh, uh, having to face what I would call maybe. Unconst unconstructive criticism from former players. Uh, all coaches and staying positive and uh, keep believing in, in the process that we're working on. Jonasson, an international player himself in the late 1990s and early 2000s, had limited success in men's singles, often playing second fiddle to Peter Gader. However, his experiences on court have proved valuable in his journey as a coach. Unless when people ask about it, I, I use very little time about my own personal badminton playing. Uh, mm. that, that is way past me uh, or behind me. I, I use all my experience and uh, emotions to understand the players from back then. So as a player and how I dealt with it and 
and my how I got more experience and so on. That's what I use, not my personal, because I've all, I've left that. I have more enough experience now as a coach, yeah. not to think uh, or spend any time on my personal playing days. Uh, it means, oh. uh, to be honest, it means absolutely nothing to me today. Uh, I'm moving forward. I'm, I'm a badminton coach, not not a badminton player. Really, as a player, but. Uh, I think my uh, my uh, my coaching history uh, since 2010, coming mm. into uh, more than 10 years now, is is uh, a lot stronger than me as a player. An experience that he draws similarities from, as both a former player and now a coach, is injuries. Keeping fit and more importantly, staying injury free gives Jonasson plenty of sleepless nights, even now. Uh, I only have sleepless nights if I have to deal with uh, players' injuries. Okay. Uh, so, uh, players' injuries on an individual level hurts me as as a coach. I know how it how it is as a player mm. being injured, mm. which limits yeah. your opportunity to practice to develop. So, uh, when when I I hurt a lot, and I can have sleepless nights when. Uh, when players uh, run into injuries, which is uh, something that we couldn't foresee. So, some injuries, you know, is oh, you work too hard for too long. It, then you should have known that it, this could happen. But some other injuries, they pop out of nowhere, out of control. And, you know, that's what gives me sleepless night. I'm, I'm quite good at uh, finding, uh, finding peace at night mm. and not thinking too much badminton, uh, but not for long. So when I fall asleep, if I wake during the night, then it's over. I, I can just as well get up and uh, <laughs> get back working. That comes with the job. I, I'm cool with that. That's uh, that's one of the, uh, the, the things that not many uh, outsiders think about with being a, uh, I think every head coach can uh, relate to the, the fact that if you're from a nation with the uh, tradition, as you mentioned, ex-players, ex-coaches, they'll have a voice, so there are quite a lot of uh, expectation and you have to be able to deal with uh, uh, And in, in modern, modern days with the, all the media platform, not all newspapers, uh, then everybody has an opinion and it's going to be voiced somewhere. If I was to change something on because of a comment made by anybody, then I could constantly change and I, w I wouldn't trust myself. I shouldn't be in the job. I, I, I seek I seek advice with uh, a certain group, uh, a few former coaches, obviously, uh, with my colleagues uh, mm -hmm. and other experts on different areas. That's where I seek my advice, and uh, so uh, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty set in stone when it comes to what I believe in and uh, and how things should be done with the responsibility given to my colleagues. I, I trust them in doing it, and mm -hmm. you know, as as one coach, you can't do it at all. You got to trust the team and not be everywhere all the time. You got to trust the team, give them the respect they they deserve, and let them do their very best. Guide them if if you see something, but overall, trust mm -hmm. everybody around you doing the the job that they they put into doing. One of Jonasson's biggest successes as a coach was helping Team Denmark win the Total VWF Thomas Cup 2016. In an epic semi-final clash against Malaysia, the Danish men's team came back from 2-0 down to seal the tie 3-2. Central to that victory was young men's doubles duo Kim Astrup and Anders Skarup Rasmussen's victory over veterans Ku Kien Kiet and Tan Boon Hyong in Game 4. Our classic match of the week.
17 of the last 19 points to the Malaysians. Oh, my goodness. The dive. He's back up. Yeah, good rally. the Danes between the legs and see that's the sort of shot you know that if I was his coach it would really frustrate me yeah. tame resistance from the Malaysians felt that, I can assure you. 71 shots. <laughs> well, I've never seen that before. <laughs> Denmark have leveled this semi final tie at. Oh dear, oh dear, misconduct for the broken racket. Next week on Badminton Unlimited, 18 year old Korean sensation An Se Young, who has taken the world tour by storm, talks about her gains. And her pains. Oh, 놀러 다니는 거 그런 게 여행 가는 사진 애들이 올리고 그러면 좀 부러운 것 같아요. Until then, remember to log on to bwfbadminton.com for the latest news and features on the sport. It's bye bye for now, and do take care.